Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning into this video. I am Jay Theo and today we're gonna be discussing gay first date tips. So I'm really, really excited to make this video because historically guys, I am someone who hates, hates, hates first dates. And don't get me wrong, it's not because I don't feel like connected with a man or getting dressed up in a cute outfit. No, it's more so just the ambiguity of it all. The possible awkward conversation, the possible lack of chemistry, not knowing if we're gonna vibe that well just in whatever activities we're doing. So all of those things always have me dreading the potential first date because I've had I've set up all these expectations and pressures of what the date could be. So I really wanted to make this video to kind of take away that pressure, to put us more in the present, and just really talk through how even if we don't have chemistry, if we don't find connection with the person we're on a date with, how can we still enjoy ourselves and have the most fun possible. So guys, with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into this video and let's chat about gay first date tips. So guys, the way this video is going to work is that we're going to break it up in three key components that I think are the backbone to any first day or just any day in general. So the first component we're gonna discuss is gonna be atmosphere and budget. So to start with atmosphere, I definitely think first day sky should be extremely chill. We do not need to go to dinner. I don't think we need to go to dinner. The reason why I don't think we need to go to dinner is because dinner is a formal environment. It puts pressure on how much are we gonna spend on the day. We have to interact with waiters, other people. We never know how long it's gonna take to get our food. And I feel like it just, it just creates this more intense level of awkward conversation, um, pressure on fi financials that we don't need to enter in on yet. And also, it doesn't really establish a good length of time on knowing how long you're gonna be on the day and when you could potentially leave if things go awry. So I think the best route to go is to keep it chill and light and keep it something that can be short or longer if you want. So I think getting something easy like coffee, um, ice cream, smoothie, or even drinks for a first date is a great option to keep things very chill. It shows the person that yes, you're interested to have a, some light conversation, but you don't have to get extremely dressed up or do this whole formal situation. And also, it's something that just creates just more lighter conversation. I feel like if you're going to grab a smoothie or you're going to grab coffee, I feel like the conversation can potentially just be lighter just because the vibe is lighter. I feel like dinner, especially at night in a dimly lit Lit, romantic vibe it's definitely putting pressure on the the situation to feel more intimate and form also I feel like getting coffee getting ice cream getting a smoothie also just showcases that the goal for this is just to see if we have a initial connection with conversation I hate when people suggest movies as a first date because like what conversation are you gonna have you're trapped in a situation for two hours watching something and you can't even build a connection through conversation so I think movies is another no no movies None of that. So I definitely think the chiller, the better for a first date. Another great atmosphere I think that works great for first dates are also like some type of fun activity. I know there's this um, adult arcade in LA that I love to take first dates to that sell drinks and they have all these old school arcade games like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Tetris. So it's a really cool vibe to take someone, especially another guy to A, grab a drink, it's low pressure, and we can stay by the bar if you want, or we can play some arcade games, get to know each other, have some light competition, kind of see, build some nostalgia, raise a potential cute conversation of, about childhood or teenage years, just something really light and cute, which I think is a lot of fun. Also, I love to take first dates on to bowling. Uh, um, a game usually only lasts maybe an hour and a half, depending on how fast or slow you guys bowl. And then I feel like that's a great amount of time to see if you build a connection, to see if you want to continue the day. And the easiest option to continue the day is to do a second game. You get some light conversation. You get to see how they interact when it, when it comes to competition. And I feel like it can just be a more fun, less serious vibe so that the conversation yet again is lighter and more just light and friendly. So definitely I think atmosphere is key and keeping it chill I think is the best route to go. Now, let's talk budget. I personally think that no first date should cost more than $50, at least initially. Now, if the date's going well and you guys keep ordering drinks or you keep playing bowling games or whatever and the date exceeds $50, 
fine, but I definitely don't think the initial setup should be more than $50. At the end of the day, you're meeting someone for the first time, and I just don't think you should be investing that much of your resources for someone you're just meeting. And guys, even though we love heteronormativity, we love to let it rain down in the gay world, especially us black gays, there are no gender roles when it comes to first dates or when it comes to dates, guys, when there's two men involved, when there's two gay people involved. I also think there should be no expectation of what someone else is gonna pay for a date. I don't go into dates ever, ever thinking that someone's gonna pay for me. Now, I have had guys pay for me on first dates and some guys literally will not let me pay. I've literally been on dates before where they will not let me pay. Fine, I'm not gonna force somebody to pay, but I'm never gonna ask someone to go on on a date that I couldn't afford to pay for my full self. So I think $50 should be the limit. I don't wanna spend more than $50 on the first date. I think it also does not set the tone that there's any type of interest in finances or letting finances influence our decisions on if we like someone or not, if we're building a connection. And honestly guys, I've been on horrible first dates. I'll never forget one time I spent over $100 on a first date in New York. It was a guy that like, we. We had, a, we had a brief, probably like a couple conversations on the phone before, so I was like, oh, I feel like I'm really connected with him. I definitely don't mind us going on a cute date. I was like, let's go to this really cute Italian spot in Soho. Like guys, and this spot was very, very cute. It had been a couple of times, but it was always like with a friend and we always just got dinner very quickly. So I invited this guy out, we get dinner, we get, then we get a bottle of wine, and then we're drinking and drinking. And the bill ended up being $130, guys. And to this day, I regret that day. I really don't think we should be investing all this money in first dates when we really don't know what the outcome's gonna be. If we're gonna like the person, connect with this person, and why drop all this cash to impress someone when we really don't even know what's going to happen. So definitely, rule of thumb, let's stick to under $50 for these first dates. And if you are someone who's about to be going on a lot of first dates or you're really trying to get back out there, do you really wanna be spending more than $50 if you go on, say, three or four dates a month? That's already almost $200 just at the $50 budget. So something to think about. So let's go ahead and get to the next topic, which is conversation. So this is key to making sure that you enjoy yourself on a first date. Now let's keep this in mind. The goal of the first date at the end of the day is to have fun and enjoy yourself regardless if you build a connection or have chemistry with this person or not. And I think obviously a big component of how successful a first date goes is the conversation. Now guys, I do think there are some topics that should be off limits or at least very minimal when you are on a first date. And let's start off with religion, guys. Now, I know for some people religion and people's beliefs are a deal breaker, so I definitely Definitely get it if you feel the need to bring it up but honestly I think religion much like politics which I know can be a deal breaker for a lot of people as well I think it really should be a comfort level with the person you're on a day, date on if they feel comfortable talking about it I still think this is a conversation that's very premature when you're just trying to see if you have chemistry or some initial connection with someone but if it comes up and you're really trying to assess out deal breakers fine but please make sure that the person is comfortable talking about those things I've been on numerous first dates where people bring up religion and I'm not a believer. I'm not a believer. Um, I, I don't adhere to traditional religion, customs, or any of that. And it's been so weird because I'll be on a date and somebody will kind of ask me my religious beliefs. And when I say, you know, I'm not really a believer, then it has this awkward moment. And then they're like, oh, but that's fine, because but I'm a believer. And it just feels very pre premature. If you like me and you want to pursue me, even though that I'm not on the same page you religion-wise, then let's talk about that later on after we've built that initial connection. In politics, I just don't think that's necessary on a first date. I like when it comes to politics, people are very, very close to their politics and they have very, very stern views when it comes to politics. And I feel like let's just eliminate that on a first date, okay? So next element of conversation I think to me still should be off limits is marriage and kids. Now, I know for a lot of you guys are probably gonna drag me in these comments and be like, well, but if it's a deal breaker, I wanna get married, or it's a deal breaker, I want kids. I get it, I get it, I get it. But guys, first day is just to build initial connection with someone. That's all that it is. It's such a journey when it comes to marriage and kids that I think for it to be 
a topic of, a topic of conversation on the first date, I just don't think that's necessary. And I think it brings up another awkward element to the date when I feel like that could be something you dive deeper in on date two, three, or four. So that's my thought on marriage and kids. I've had very awkward first dates around regarding marriage and kids, and I just really don't think that should really play a part in an initial connection. Lastly, one element of conversation I definitely don't think we should speak to are exes. Guys, why do you like to talk about your exes on a first date? Why? I hate it. It makes it, I'm sorry, it always makes me think you're still hung up on your ex. I don't care if you were dating them 10 years ago, five years ago, yesterday. I don't care. I'm just trying to feel like if we have a connection, I want to see if I have that connection with you, if I have any chemistry with you. I don't really care about why your last relationship ended or why you're just getting back on the saddle. I don't give a fuck. I do not. Literally, I was on a first date once and this guy literally talked 35 to 45 minutes about his ex-husband and how they're working through a divorce and all this. It was just way too much. And it was I literally had to tell him like, I don't understand why we keep talking about your, your ex-husband. I'm not understanding why we're talking about your divorce. Why? Like I literally asked him that. He looked dumbfounded and got bothered. But I literally want to know like, why is this something you feel that I need to know on a first date? I just didn't understand it. And I've had numerous first dates where guys will go on and on and on and on about an ex. I do not care about your ex. And that's that on that. Let's dive deeper into people's interests, what they do for fun, what they do on the weekends, what are people's dreams and goals, um, where are they from, what made them the person they are right now. Like, let's talk about those cool things. Like, let's talk about what gets you up in the morning. Like, what excites you. Let's talk about fun stuff like that. Just, just more conversation that leads you to genuinely understand who this person is. Let's talk about shows and, and movies. Let's talk about um, on the last vacation we went on. Like, let's talk about those things. Let's talk about things that really showcase who you are as a person and what interests you have to see if we have things in common, to see if we build a connection. Those are the things we should be going after when it comes to conversation on a first date, not how many kids you want in 2035. So that's all I have to say about conversation. Keep it light, keep it friendly, keep it upbeat, let's avoid politics, let's avoid religious. And guys, nobody wants to talk about marriage, kids, or exes on a first date. Just saying. Okay, so lastly, we're gonna talk about experience and expectation. And these two things kind of go hand in hand. So when it comes to overall experience, I definitely think, guys, the goal should just be to be present, to be actively engaged, and to just actively be a part of this date. Even if you're not, not feeling this connection, you're not feeling chemistry, I found, my, the, the, I found the times that I'm just present, I'm engaging with the person on the first date, I feel like I still end up enjoying myself. Even if at the end of it, I don't wanna see this person again. Why not you got dressed up, you put yourself out there, you're out and about, why not use this time to really listen to what the person is saying to actively engage to actively respond and not be thinking about oh what could i be doing later oh, or how could i better use this time because i'm not liking this person or oh my god i like them so much i wonder if they want a picket fence in a house in, in, in the hills or oh my god i wonder if we plan a vacation together would they want to go to barcelona like no get out of your head get out of your head get out of your head and be present in the day and engage talk, discuss, say the person's name, listen to what they're saying, um, take it in. You know, even when you feel compelled to talk about yourself, let someone talk, let someone um, um, speak about themselves and then you speak about yourself, but let there be a balance. Be present, be present. If you feel yourself floating away and start thinking about something else or thinking about the future with this person or, or finding yourself just romanticizing the person, take it back, bring it back and be present. That's how you're going to have the most fun on this date. Also, expectations. I think a great way to enjoy a first date is to have neutral expectations or none at all. First dates are so am ambiguous. You never know what's going to happen if you're going to build a connection or if you're not. So I think the best route to go is just to have no expectations. Just go into it like I'm meeting someone new. It could go great. It could go bad. It could go whatever. But I'm just going into this. I'm going to be fully engaged. I'm going to be present. I'm going to do my best in on this date to enjoy myself and to have a good ass time. So be present, be engaged, be active, and keep your expectations neutral or low. 
And at the end of the day, guys, have fun. Have fun. Getting dressed up, going on dates, being single, doing that thing should also be fun. At the end of the day, life is too short and it can be gone in a moment's notice. So why not enjoy the experiences we're having, even if you realize, okay, this person is not going to be my husband or my significant other, but still enjoy the time that you're having on this date. But overall, guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. I hope this offered a little bit of insight on how we continue to make first dates better and enjoy ourselves as we get back out there. Please be sure to like and subscribe, guys. Hit that notification bell so you can stay in tune on all my latest videos. I'll be pushing out a lot more content over the next few weeks, next few months. And I'm having so much fun as I'm growing my channel on YouTube. But yes, guys, with all that being said, Try your best, as always, to stay positive, stay curious, and I will see you guys on my next video.